Hi, today we will be studying recursion. So before going to recursion, let's go to the basics of recursion that is functions in C programming. Functions help us to divide the code into different modules so that the code becomes more readable. So, for example, print as function in functions in C help us to print any string, character, or any uh, any special symbol across the keyboard. Scanf function in C helps us to accept any string, any character, or any special symbol across the keyboard. Not only printf and scanf help us in doing this, but they also help us to re not to reinvent the wheel. That is, in case I have to write my name in C programming, that is int main. return 0 printf percentage s comma and above so what printf saves us from doing is that it helps us from making this from not making system calls across the system System calls are the one that interact with the kernel in order to produce the required output, which are written often in assembly language. So write is one of the system calls that are written in assembly or mnemonics code. So what will happen is that user assembly is not a user friendly language or is not a higher language. That is, we will not be able to write very much user friendly code with the, with the help of write function. And if we write, then the function becomes too long and it is not a readable function. Try a function in C to add two numbers which are passed as parameters to the function. So this was a basic of recursion has come from the older algorithm concepts in computer science known as divide and conquer which says that divide a complex problem into small problems so that they can be treated one by one and finally we will reach to the final big problem that is let's uh, write a simple program of calculating the factorial of a number through the two approaches of recursion and iteration. This is the iterative approach By iterative approach I mean by using loops that is for loops, while loops and by recursive approach I mean by calling the function itself again Let us see For calculating factorial, if I need to calculate 5 factorial, then what I need to do is from 5, I will multiply 4, after that I will multiply 3 with the product, after that 2, after that finally 1. So, this comes to 120. For writing the same stuff in programming, what we will do is that, I will take a for loop, I will take one counter, I will multiply the same with the number which is being rotated in the loop that is first time the value of c is 1 
After that, second time, it gets multiplied by with i. That is, i is x. x is the number that is being obtained. That is being passed from the main function. In case i will pass 5, then first time the value of c will be 1 cross 5 equal to 5. Next time the value of c will be 5 cross 4. That is, 20. Next time the value of c will be 20 cross 3. That is 60. After that, 60 cross 2. That is 120. And finally, 120 into 1. That is 120 again. So we get 5 factorial equal to 120. Similarly, if I you write my factorial program in a recursive manner, what I will do is that, except for the loop, many factors will remain same. No recursion program is ever complete without something known as a base condition that will tell the recursive program or the recursive function to stop at some point. That is, by applying some logic, I found out that 0 factorial is equal to 1. That is simple. In case n factorial equal to n into n minus 1 factorial, then we know that 1 factorial equal to 1 cross 0 factorial and we always know that 1 factorial equal to 1. Therefore, 0 factorial will always be 1. So, what I will do is that I will check the base condition for the point being that when the function will get stopped or when the function will get over. If x equal to equal to 0 then I will return the factorial value of x in case x what I will do is that call the factorial function by input that is 1 less than the previous input. So, by debugging we found out that factorial of 5 is equal to 5 into factorial of 4. Factorial of 4 will got, get called from here and factorial of 4 is equal to factorial of 4 in sorry 4 into factorial of 3 similarly factorial of 3 is equal to 3 into factorial of 2 factorial of 1 sorry factorial of 2 equal to 2 into factorial of 1 factorial of 1 is 1 into now so to calculate factorial of 0 uh, I will replace my return x by return 1 I have made a mistake over there so factorial of 0 is always known to our function that is it will return 1 so finally what happens is that 5 into factorial of 4 factorial 4 is equal to 4 into factorial of 3 and so on. So finally I will get this factorial 5 equal to 5 into what is the 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 that is 120. So with recursion or by making some more number of function calls what I did that I will I have calculated the factorial of the number. So what kind of debugging is done here we shall discuss. So the most important part in this program of a recursive approach was that to give the base condition. If we didn't give any base condition to the function, then the function shall go into an infinite loop and it shall never come out of that until unless user quits. So it is very important for us to give a base condition in recursive. Now let us see how to compile those two programs in C in GCC compiler and Linux. 
So what we'll do, we do is that G plus plus name of the program. In case I give the first program name iterative dot C. So what I will give is G plus plus is for C plus plus. So I need to replace this by C C for C programming. Then I will create an output file of this and give it some name I T. And then press enter at dollar prompt in C in Linux. Sorry. After that, in order to compile the recursive version, what I will do is that on the dollar prompt cc recursive dot c minus o re. In order to run both the programs, what I will do is that simply dot slash it, and for running the recursive program dot slash re. So with this, we will lead to the execution of both the recursive and the iterative approach respectively. Thank you.